Right. So, we have now removed the two nano coulomb and also the four nano coulomb. But you know there is an electric field existing at the origin. Is that right? We don't know who causes that field. The C part, we want to find out what causes that field. If the force due to the, if the force, if, what I mean is, when I say if the force, the force on that original two nano coulomb is due to a charge placed on the y axis at y equal to 3, somewhere here. That's right. You see that original electric field of E equal to 10 to the power of 5 in the positive y direction. We are now told that it is caused by a charge Q placed at y equal to 3. Now, we need to find what is the value of that charge. In other words, what electric charge placed at y equal to 3 produces at the origin an electric field E equal to 4 times 10 to the 5 Newton per Coulomb. That is what we want to answer. You know that E equal to KQ over R squared, where this Q we need to find. What is this R? R is 3. And E we know the electric field at the origin. So E is 4 times 10 to the 5 Newton per Coulomb. R is 3 meter. K we know. Therefore we can find the Q. So let's uh, put the values in there. K is 9 times 10 to the 9 times Q divided by r squared is 0 0.03 all squared and this quantity equal to E which is 4 times 10 to the 5 Newton per column and now you can solve for Q Q equal to Q equal to look at this E r squared divided by K and now, this is the E value, the electric field at the origin. R is this, R squared is 0 0.03 squared, and K we know. So that will be R squared times E divided by K. And that will be 4 times 10 to the negative 8 column. So, the electric field of 4 times 10 to the 5 neutron per column at the origin was actually produced by a charge of Q equal to 4 times 10 to the negative 8 column. Can you write this using nano column? How many nano columns is this? 4 times 10 to the negative 8 columns is 40 nano columns. Is that right? Yes, that's equal to 40 nano columns. Okay? I hope you understood the concept of the problem. Let's do another one. Two equal positive charges of magnitude Q1 equal to Q2 equal to 6 nano coulomb are on the y axis at y1 equal to positive 3 centimeter and y2 equal to negative 3 centimeter. What is the magnitude and direction of the electric field? at x equal to 4 centimeter. B, what is the force exerted on a third charge, Q0 equal to 2 nano coulomb, when it is placed at x equal to 4 centimeter? Well, that's simple enough, I think. Well, this is the situation. You have a charge Q1 equal to 6 nano coulomb at y equal to 3. You got another charge Q2 equal to 6 nano coulomb at y equal to negative 3. And these are centimeters. So you need to convert them to meters. Well, you need to find the electric field at a point x equal to 4 at this point. All right. First of all, we need to figure out this distance the distance of charge 1 from this point. You see, if this is 3 centimeter, 
and if this is 4 cm, this will be 5 cm. Is that right? 3, 4, 5 are Pythagorean triples. So this distance is 5 cm, which is 0 0.05 meter. Well, if this is 0 0.05 meter, this also is 0 0.05 meter. So we now know the distances of the two charges from that point. Okay. Feel that x equal to 4 cm due to charge Q1 will be, what's the equation for field at a point due to a charge? Is KQ over R squared. E1 equal to KQ1 over R squared. Where K we know, Q1 is 6 nanocoulombs, 6 times 10 to the negative 9. And R squared is 0 0.05 squared. There you are. K Q1 over R squared. And calculate that. Always keep a calculator with you when you listen to the lecture. Alright? Uh, always check my calculations. And that will be 2.2 times 10 to the 4 Newton per Coulomb. Now tell me, what is the direction of that electric field? The direction of the electric field, this is a positive charge. You see, the electric field due to a positive charge will be directed away from it. So the electric field here, due to that positive charge, will be directed away from it. There you are. This will be E1, which is 2.2 times 10 to the 4 Newton per coulomb. Similarly, what will be the field at this point due to the charge Q2? It will be the same amount because all these quantities will be the same. All right, The field at x equal to 4 due to Q2 will be kq2 over r squared, where q2 is the same, 6 nanocoulomb. Is that right? Yes. And uh, that will be KQ2 over R squared. That has the same magnitude, 2.2 times 10 to the 4 Newton per coulomb. What is the direction of that field? Well, Q2 is also a positive charge, isn't it? Q1 equal to Q2 equal to positive 6 nanocoulomb. So the field at this point due to Q2 will be directed away from it. That is the direction of E2. Okay, we now know the magnitudes of E1 and E2. How do we find the vector sum of these two forces, of these two electric field vectors? First of all, we need to obtain the angle each one of them makes with the x-axis. If you know one angle, then you know the other. Alright, can you give me a strategy for finding this angle? Angle made by E2 with the positive x-axis. Well, that angle is the same as this angle. You see that? Vertically opposite angle. And you can find this angle. The opposite side of that angle is 3, and the adjacent side is 4. Therefore, if theta is that angle, tan theta will be 3 divided by 4. Alright, so here we have E1 and E2. The angle made by E2 with the x-axis, as I was telling you, the angle made by E2 with the x-axis, this angle is the same as its opposite angle is theta equal to tan inverse of 3 divided by 4 and that will be 37 degrees so if the angle made by E2 with the x-axis is 37 degrees what is the angle made by E1 with the positive x-axis? that will be negative 37 degrees because the angle made by E2 is a positive angle the angle made by E1 is a negative angle. The angle made by E1 with the x-axis is then negative 37 degrees. 
can you now write each of these vectors in the x and y component form? Well, once you know the angle, this E1 will be equal to uh, its magnitude times cos of angle theta, that is the x component, and the magnitude times sine of the angle will be the y component. So let's start with E2. E2 is 2.2 times 10 to the 4, that is the magnitude of it we calculated early. 2.24 times 10 to the 4 cos 37 degrees i, that is the x component, plus 2.2 times 10 to the 4 sine 37 degrees j, that is the y component. So E2 has this x component and this y component. And now use your calculator to find the value of that. That will be 1.76 times 10 to the 4i, that is the x component, and 1.3 times 10 to the 4 is the y component. There you got the x component, 1.76 times 10 to the 4, and the y component is 1.3 times 10 to the 4. So we have taken care of E2 as its x component and y component. Let's do the same with E1. Can you write E1 the same way? The only difference is the angle is now negative 37 degrees. So E1 equal to 2.2 times 10 to the 4 cosine of negative 37 degrees I, that is the x component, plus 2.2 times 10 to the 4 sine negative 37 degrees J, that is the y component, and that will be 1.76 times 10 to the 4i, that is the x component, there you are, minus 1.3 times 10 to the 4j, look at the y component is negative. And what do you notice here? The y components of the two are equal and opposite, they cancel. So when you want to add e1 to e2, the y components, the positive and negative, they will cancel. And the x components will add up. So E1 plus E2 equal to 1.76 times 10 to the 4i plus 1.76 times 10 to the 4i. That will be 2 times 1.76 times 10 to the 4i. That will be 3.52 times 10 to the 4i, that is the resultant electric field at that point. Alright? Okay, that is the first part. What is the second part? We now know that the electric field at this point is 3.52 times 10 to the 4i. What is the force exerted on a third charge Q0 equal to 2 nanocoulomb when you place it there. If you remember, electric field, what is the definition of electric field? Electric field is the force per unit charge. Therefore, what will be the force on this charge when it is placed in that electric field? Force will be electric field multiplied by the charge. Force on Q0 equal to 2 nanocoulomb placed at x equal to 4 will be F equal to Q0 times E. I hope that concept is now very clear. When you place a charge in a field, it will experience a force given by F equal to Q0 times E. And now, Q0 is 2 nanocoulombs, 2 times 10 to the 9 coulombs, and the electric field is 3.52 times 10 to the 4i. Now, you must keep that direction. This is an x vector. So the force also will be an x force. That will be 7 times 10 to the negative 5 newton i. You must specify that direction because this is a vector.